Hi, I'm Scott Hanselman. I've got a number of videos on YouTube that'll show you how to use Windows 8, make it not quite so scary. Uh, but this video I wanted to talk about Microsoft Word. I was actually helping a friend over screen sharing uh, get some things done in Word, and I realized that there is a split in the world. You know, there's always two kinds of people, right? There's this kind of person, that kind of person. Well, there's two kinds of people in the Microsoft Word world. There's people who really know how to use Word, and then there's basically everyone else. Uh, and it makes it feel like Word is harder than, uh, than it really is, but also that there's this there's this gap that you can jump over. And I wanted to talk about that gap a little bit and kind of get you to be a member of the Word Mafia because a lot of folks are centering things with spaces and misusing tabs and confused about tables. So consider this your, uh, your entry into getting Word and doing it right. And maybe a couple of secrets about uh, Word that you may not have known. So um, let me just show you what I've got here. What I did is I just went and searched for resume example, and I told Google uh, search for file types with the extension doc. And I just downloaded the first three or four examples. Now, interestingly enough, we've got a education resume, a, uh, something from UC Davis, so this was from a school, and then a .gov that had some military resume examples. Now, some of you may not necessarily agree with my conclusions here, but I want to just basically show you how Word is meant to be used and how people often use it and why you might consider learning a little bit more. So this is a bit of a long video, but if you bear with me, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll learn something. So here's a resume from an intern. Uh, this is not a real person. This is just one of the examples that we downloaded there. Uh, and just to make sure we get some basics, this is called the ribbon, this big toolbar here. You can see that some things are large and some things are small. These are what I call either pull-downs or chevrons. You see the little down arrow there. So I'll say something like click paste or pull down the paste menu. These are tabs within the ribbon. So I might say click on the references tab or click on home. Okay. So when we see a, a resume like this, a lot of times a, someone will send me a resume. Uh, the first thing that I'll do, and this is a little secret that people don't realize, that people who really know Word will get a resume in the mail and they'll look at it and they'll say, that's that looks nice, but is it well structured? I'm going to go and click on this button here, the show and hide paragraph mark. And I click that and that's going to show me all the non-printable characters. I'm just clicking that to show you. There is a place where someone actually hit return. They hit enter there. Here are places where someone pushed space. Now I'm going to just hit use the control button. I'm hitting control with one hand and then I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse. So control scroll. See? So I can zoom in there. A lot of people, I'll find people writing Word documents like this or maybe like that and they're really not using their whole screen. So I'm just going to zoom in to make it easier for YouTube. First thing I notice here, and this is so common in, in Word documents, is Look what happened here. See how this isn't really lined up? They started to basically go like this, and then they gave up, and then they pushed tab a bunch of times, and then they just they hit space a couple more times. And it kind of lined up, and it kind of looks okay, but the problem with that is, what if this font, I'm just going to select that by clicking on the left side here and making it larger. What if that gets bigger? Well, now the whole thing fell apart. Or what if I do something basic like, you know, making it bold? Look at that. Even just making it bold and the entire thing fell apart. So let's look at how to fix a problem like that. This is so common. The space bar is for spaces. That's not how you position text. So what I'm going to do is select this here, okay? And before I get started, I'm just going to click on the View tab, and I'm going to click Ruler. See that ruler that appears? I need that. What I want is to set a tab stop here. By default, tabs just go about a half an inch. Every time you click tab, it moves a half an inch. But you can set top stops just like you could on an old style typewriter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click. Now, I don't try to put a tab stop right here. I'll just click one anywhere. See? I just stuck a tab stop there. Now, you notice this tab stop here left tab. See how it goes down and over? That looks the same as this one here. Look at that. 
left tab. But if I click this one on the left, there's a center tab, there's a right, and there's a decimal. Each time you click that, it cycles through what you're trying to put there, you see? What I want is a right tab. So what that means is I want one that is going to right align things. So I'm going to actually click on this and drag it away. Look at that. I'm dragging away. It's going to delete. I'm going to click again. Now it goes down and over. So this on the left controls what gets inserted when you click. Now I'm going to get rid of all this space crap. This is gross. I'll just put a single tab. And then over here I'll put another single tab. Okay. And what I want to do is I'm going to have a tab in the middle here. I can actually click once, and if I want, I can double click on that. You see, I can see the locations of my two tabs. I want this to center tab. I want this to be centered. I'm going to hit set. So that's a center tab, and I'll hit OK. So here's a tab where I think things will be centered, and here's one that goes off to the right. All right. I'll put a tab here. Now, let's drag this over. Look at that. This tab, I'm going to put it right there on the margin. This tab here hits right there. And here, look. Look at that. See how it's moving freely between that? I'll put it at about, you know, three and a half inches, let's say. Now, I can double click on this tab and I can see that I've got one at 3.44. If I want, I can actually change that, make it 3.5 if I really want it to be perfect, right? And I'll get rid of the 3.44. So I've got one at 3.5 and one at 6.5 and hit OK. Nice. I can do the same thing by selecting two lines. See? So I'm going to apply these tabs, one at the center, and then we had one at 6.5. That was a right. And now I've set it for both. And what I'm going to do again, I'm going to get rid of white space. We do this a lot when we see documents. I'm just going to delete all this white space. Just clean up first. Then hit tab. Okay. I've got an extra one there. There we go. So here on these two lines, I've got a center tab at three and a half. And I've got a right aligned tab at six and a half. And look how nice and clean that is. Okay. Get rid of that extra space there. And I'm going to notice how I can, <clears throat> excuse me, notice how I can select a word, but I can also select a line. You see how when you move to the left here, the, the cursor turns to the side. So this is your selector cursor. It's leaned this way. But if I go over to the left, it's turned off to the side. That's where you select an entire line. And you can just click and drag and select whole lines. In fact, you can double click to select a word or triple click to select a entire paragraph. But here I'm going to just select two lines, that one and that one. And from here now, look, I can grab that tab and I have a lot more control. I can grab this tab and control that. Now, let's do that experiment we did before. Can I make things bold? I can. It doesn't get messed up. Can I make things smaller or bigger? And it doesn't get messed up. This will allow me then to change the orientation of the app of the uh, this will allow me to change the orientation of the document without messing, th messing stuff up. So that's tab stops. Very important. As soon as someone gets a resume that's made in Word, if you're going to be working as an admin particularly, if I go and turn on paragraph marks and I see this, whether you like it or not, and I know that people in the comments might really be upset about this, this advertises, I have no idea how to use Word. This is a guaranteed, I'm a basic, maybe competent, but still a basic Word user. Being able to do things like tab stops takes you to that, that next level. Now let's look at another one. I'm going to close this guy up. Here is a federal resume template. Again, found this on Google. If you're the author, I'm sorry. Uh, I open up the file here. I'm going to zoom in, of course. Again, control scroll. 
and I'm going to turn on paragraph marks. Some people, some word people actually like to run with paragraph marks on all the time. I'm one of those people. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. And I'm going to scroll down. And I notice here, like, we've got note one, note two, note three, note four. Sometimes folks want to have either that indented, the first line of the paragraph indented, or they want to do what's called a hanging indent. So let me show you a trick. I'm going to select all of those things here. I could also select the entire document. Remember, ruler is your friend. A lot of word people like to have the ruler on and the paragraph marks on. Now you see this here? We've got a little triangle pointing down. That's the first line indent. A little triangle pointing up. That's the hanging. And then the little square below is different. So let's watch what happens if we drag each one. See? That's how you do an indent. Not a tab. Here I'll indent at one half. See? Now if you get confused, if you mess something up, you can always just control Z or press undo. Now let's take the hanging indent. Check this out. It's tricky. Yep, you gotta grab the triangle. There it is. You see? So now I've got note one hanging indent. Or I could grab the entire thing and bring it in on the left. Now here's a tricky one. Notice how we've got two spaces after the colon here. A lot of times people will want to do this. They're going to want to select everything. Here I've selected the first five notes. They're going to want a hanging indent. Let's bring it into one inch just to make a point or a little bit less actually. How about that? And then they want this here to line up with that. What's the right way? Well, people end up going like this. And it'll never be right. That might look right, but then the first time you change the font size, it goes to hell. Okay? What we're going to do is we're going to, again, select the whole thing. I'm selecting because, because paragraph changes apply to the selected paragraph. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the tab stops. Now, you can put them anywhere and then move them. So I just put a left tab and then I'm going to drag the left tab right there. Okay? So now instead of white space here, that's just spaces, I'm going to hit tab. Now notice that we're getting a little bit of a grammar checker confusion where it, it doesn't like one colon and I can tell it to knock it off. But this isn't about grammar. This is about our document being well formatted. Now look at that. So the hanging indent brings the paragraph in and the tab jumps me from here to here. Then I could change the size of the text and it still looks nice. It stays nice. See how flexible that is? So tab stops, margins, makes all the difference. Now here's a, a, a common tragedy. Again, when you turn paragraph marks on, you can see where someone pressed enter. Okay. Here's some bullet points. Here's some, where someone pushed tab. This is actually built into bullet points. But look at this. Somebody got confused here. Whoever was making this federal resume template got confused and they went and they just ended up pushing tab. But this is not uh, multiple paragraphs. Look, if I change the size, look what happens. The whole thing falls apart. They look pretty and lined up at 12 point, but if you go to 14 or 11, it goes to heck. So what was their intent here? Well, their intent was to have that indented. So the first thing you do is you get rid of all this tab mess. Just delete it. Now notice though, if this is off, if paragraph marks are off, you're just like, I don't know what's going on here, but there's something there. Turn that on. There we go. Get rid of that tab. Okay. Select that line and I can do a couple of things. I can increase the indent these buttons here, notice what they're doing. They're actually moving that for me. You see that? That's the easiest way. One, two. It's a quarter of an inch each time. Or I could grab a hold of this. See? Notice how it wraps really nicely. 
I'll line it up right there. See? Or maybe I want a hanging indent. Or maybe I just want it to be part of the larger bulleted list. Then I'll just hit bullet and it'll join the list. But the point here is that they were intending to indent something and ended up using tabs to do it. Again, ah, look at this. Look at, the, look at this mess here. This is interesting. So here we've got a couple things. Let's fix it. Let's see if we can know how to do it right now. Ready? And also I'm going to add these, uh, these little dashes. But first, let's back out. So I'm just going to remove all of this stuff. Now there's a couple ways I could do this. I could even go and do a search and replace if I wanted to. And basically search and replace tabs. But this is small enough that we'll just do it like this. And I'm just moving around with my cursors and deleting stuff. All right. So select it all. Remember, first line, hanging indent, and left indent. We'll pull the hanging in. Then we'll pull the first line in. Maybe they want hanging in a little bit more. I'll drop a tab pull the tab over a little bit, then we'll go boom, 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 boom. Now you notice this isn't lined up. That's because second line actually pushed that too far. If we want, we could grab that tab, move it over a little bit more, grab the hanging indent. Now notice this. This is a good little kind of mistake I made here. See how I'm moving this, but the whole thing isn't moving? That's because I don't have those lines all selected as a team. See? Now when I do that, this will gray out. And it's graying out saying, well, the settings are different between all these lines. So I'm just going to tap it one time. Just click. We'll put that there. Put that there. This line has an extra tab. I can pull those out. I can click there. You see how each line has its own settings. Turn this off. Again, that's an annoying grammar rule about tabs after colons, but we can ignore that. I should tell it to ignore it all the time. Here I got a couple of extra spaces. And look at that. Much cleaner. Here's another example. Hanging indent built up with tabs. You know how to fix that now. Here, here's a tough one. I am able to use the following software, Office. I'm, I, I really wish that you were, but you, I'm afraid you really are having some struggles right now. So this is just kind of a basic, basic overview of tabs and uh, indents in Word. At a, at a slow pace. I hope that it helped you out. If you like videos like this, if you want me to go deeper, columns, section breaks, table of contents, uh, end notes, reference notes, I'm happy to do that. Let me know in the comments that this provided you some value. If it did, great. If not, maybe I'll do a different kind of video, but I hope that, uh, I hope this helps some folks. Thanks.